I want to talk today about my friend Dave Humphrey, who teaches here at Seneca College, and I also want to talk about a movement that Dave is helping to start. Now, this is Dave's picture here on the screen. Uh, he teaches computer studies here at Seneca. And what's interesting about Dave is he teaches in uh, a very unique and I think exciting way. He doesn't teach using the classroom. He teaches using the Mozilla's global open source community. His students get on bugs, on projects, and they learn virtually with some of the best coders in the world building real software, making real things for the web. And to me that's exciting and speaks of the potential of the web and the potential of open source thinking. And it ties to something that, as I say, Dave is helping to build and that I believe the, the world needs. Something like a, a 21st century scouting movement, a movement that helps anyone who wants to tap into the skills and the creativity that the web can unleash. And, you know, why do I talk about scouting as, as an example here? You don't think about scouting when you think about innovation, when you think about the web, when you think about creativity even. But if you go back a hundred years, Baden-Powell, who founded scouting, uh, you know, had a very particular idea in mind, is that he wanted urban young people in an increasingly urbanized, industrializing world to reconnect to nature. And he wanted them to have skills, he wanted to have the a sense of joy and creativity, and some sense of stewardship as they connected to nature. And he chose to use a technology that at the time was incredibly arcane, the technology and the techniques of camping. At the time, camping was something that only the military did. Civilians never did it. Civilian camping was one of the great innovations that scouting contributed to the world. And through camping, he did connect uh, you know, young people from cities to nature, and certainly left us a hundred years later, where camping is something that you know, tens of millions of people do for joy, for creativity, and to connect to nature. And it's no longer primarily a professional activity, but something that is uh, you know, a part of our hobbies, a part of our amateur life, a part of the mainstream. And I think we need a movement that does the same with coding, that does the same with the web. Certainly we will always have highly skilled professional coders, but imagine if a hundred years from now, the anyone who wanted to had the skills, had that sense of creativity, and to some degree had that stewardship in relationship to the web because they learned how to code. That's something that I think the world needs and it's something that I think Mozilla can help uh, contribute to. And that's why we've made a commitment to the idea of helping tens of millions of people move from using the web to making the web. So why would we do that? Why would Mozilla be interested in helping a movement like that start? Why would Mozilla want people to move from using the web to making the web? Well, you know, a practical reason that comes to mind if you're here, especially at colleges like Seneca, is the world does need more professional coders. And here's a, a, one of uh, Mozilla's developers here on the screen with his accordion. Um, and, you know, that's something that we want to help contribute to, is that people who want to become engineers, especially who want to contribute to open source projects, that more people can do that. There's a pathway to do that. But the real story is, I actually think everyone needs to learn a little bit of code, or at least learn the mechanics of the web and how it works and what it opens up for them. Understand the open ethos and the open building blocks that the web is made of. And increasingly, people talk about the web and code as a fourth literacy, and certainly I believe it is. In addition to reading, writing, and arithmetic, the, the ability to express yourself in the digital world, to understand the digital world, to take control of your digital life, is something that all of us need. And, you know, validatingly enough, or, you know, something that, that gives me great heart in that, is here's the UK Secretary of Education saying the same thing. The computer skills are the grammar of the 21st century. And more importantly, if you look at this quote from under his photo, what Ed Vasey, the UK Secretary of Education, says is, even a basic understanding of computer coding will help you understand the structure of your digital life. That quote could have come from anybody in Mozilla, including uh, Mozilla's Mitchell Baker, who talks often about us being in control of our digital lives and having uh, you know, autonomy and agency. And what's interesting is, you know, it's not just policymakers and it's not just Mozilla. There are startups uh, and grassroots groups all over the world starting 
to do what this New York Times article talks about learning the language of the internet and help people and uh, teaching people the language of the internet. So we're, you know, we think this is important, that the literacy of coding and of the web is important, and also uh, we see a growing move in the same direction, and we want to help focus that and support it. And that brings me back to, to Dave a little bit, which is, you know, why does that literacy matter? Where does the web fit into it. And Dave is one of the people who, when I first came to Mozilla, taught me about something one of my colleagues now calls view sourcism. And it's a critical thing about the web and a critical thing, I think, about what this movement stands for or should stand for and what we need to teach. And that, you know, to, to get that story, to understand that critical thing, we need to go back to Mosaic. In 93, um, the first graphical web browser that came out, or maybe it was 94, um, and you know, a great revolution for all of us. And you know, people who were there at the time or used it at the time will remember how wonderful it was to finally have an internet where you could follow links and see pictures and all of those things. And it, you know, that's built a wonderful world where almost two billion people are on the internet today, and things are far shinier uh, and far nicer to use than they were back in the Mosaic days. You know, as this iPod symbolizes. But you know, beyond just being nicer and slicker, um, the internet has also changed in another way. There's another difference between the world that we have now and the world that Mosaic helped to build. And that difference is you know, who can create and what the building blocks for creation are. If you think about the tablet world, the smartphone world as it currently exists, it really is something that's much more about elegant consumption than about creativity. Is something where if you want to create an app, you have to ask the permission of Apple or Google to create that app and put it in the App Store. That's very different than the view source world that Mosaic helped to create. It's very different than the web. And the two differences are, with the web, I could then, in 1993 or 94, and I can still today, put up any web page, any app, any service without asking permission from anyone else. And that is one of the cores of the creativity and wealth that the web has unleashed. But also, I could click view source in that browser back in 93 or 94, and I could also do that today in Firefox or Chrome or any other browser, and I can see how the page is made. I can see the code. And that is built into the design of the web and is very different than the elegant consumption of the tablet world and the smartphone world that we're seeing emerge around us. And it is a, a difference that is critical in terms of creativity and openness. And so we're at a juncture right now where we have to ask our question, do we want an internet primarily or only of consumers? And all of us like to sit back and watch a movie and consume sometime. Or do we also want an internet of creators? And I believe, and Mozilla believes, we want an internet of creators. And that's what this movement is about, and that's very much what I think Dave is helping to contribute to. So the question is how? How do we do that? How do we make sure that we continue to have and that we grow the internet as a, a place for creativity? And not just by coders, but by everyone. Well, Mozilla has certainly uh, contributed to that or, or works on that through it's consumer products. That's central to how we think about it. And so uh, Firefox um, has ex you know, been around since 2003 as something that was very much about that connection of moving people from consumption to creation, from being consumers to producers. And we're now working on things uh, like a phone and app environments that are oriented towards the web being the platform as opposed to closed operating systems being the platform. And again, that is about paving the way for a world that is oriented towards people being creators and producers when they want to be. But Mozilla is also working on something else, working on something we call web makers, something which is oriented to reaching to individuals and helping them get the skills and get access to the technology that helps them make things, the th whatever is in their imagination. And that piece, that idea of uh, building tools, building software, building learning programs for web makers, to us is we aspire to have be as critical as Firefox, as big an impact as Firefox 
in terms of building an internet that is there for all of us to create with. And so last December, Mozilla made a major commitment to this idea of web makers. And I want to just take a moment to, to kind of go into three pieces of it, because it ties back to Dave's story and to what I think you here at Seneca can be doing. So there's three basic pieces to this web makers idea. One is software, the other is recipes, and the other is communities of people. Let me just explain each of those in turn. On the software side, we're trying to build products, we are building products, that teach the web by helping you make cool things. And so, uh, you know, the idea is we invite you to make something on the web and hope you will learn some of the skills about how to code for the web or at least how the mechanics of the web work as you make cool things. The first foray we had into that as an early experiment last year was something called Hackasaurus and a little piece of software called the X-Ray Goggles. And I'm not going to explain it. I'm actually going to uh, let um, some of our volunteers, or well, you'll see who they are, some kids we work with in New York, explain what Hackasaurus is. So you can see what Hackasaurus does is it exposes people to the open building blocks of the web and the creative potential very quickly and in a simple way. And our plan is to build more and more software, more complex software, web apps that help people explore that creativity and the open building blocks of the web. To go with that, we imagine a set of recipes that make it clear what web skills matter most, but also that are a, you know, basically a quick start to making something on the web. And those recipes are almost like add-ons for the, that software that help you uh, just get started making a web page, making something new, but also walk you through some of those learning experiences. And so an early prototype of that was something we called the Love Bomb Builder. And it lets you make a simple greeting card uh, using a template. And each of those templates is a recipe that shows you something about how the web works. So in this case, I can make this, choose the template for this wrestler, and I can make that greeting card there, and it shows me what the code is that underlies that greeting card. And it walks me through the process of editing it and making the greeting card customized to whoever I want to send it to. And then, of course, it lets me create an a internet address where I can send that greeting card out to somebody I care about. And we imagine that we can get thousands of people contributing these kinds of recipes to teach each other how the web works, but also to give each other a head start to, in making cool things. Really, the web is about building on what others have created, and we imagine that the kind of software we create can encourage that approach. And then the last thing that we're doing as a part of this web makers effort is to find people who want to teach and learn the same things that we do. And there are many ways that we're doing that, but one of them is this summer to do a campaign where we invite 10,000 young people to get together with each other in their living rooms, around their kitchen table, wherever they want to meet, and use that software and use those recipes to make things for each other, to edit their Tumblr templates, whatever. But we imagine seeding some elements of this movement by just inviting people, encouraging people to get together and teach each other some of the basics of code and how the web works. And to us, you know, that's where you have to start. You just have to start by inviting people's creativity for the web. That's where you start to move towards a movement like that. And one of the differences that I think I see in the kind of movement we want to build from something like scouting is that it isn't just about a single organization. It's certainly not just about Mozilla. The, another place I take some inspiration is Product Red. And what's interesting about Product Red is you can tell that that's a Converse shoe 
or a Beats headphones or an Apple iPad, but they're all connected by the same idea, the same set of values symbolized by that color connecting them. And I think that's what we need for the web as well, that the startups, the grassroots groups, and even the education ministers of the world who believe that we need web literacy, they believe that we all need to know a little bit about code, band together to build this movement. Which brings me back, oh, and so the three things Mozilla is going to contribute to building that movement, as I say, are software, recipes, and helping to build and bring together communities of people who want to teach and learn. Which brings me back to Dave. Uh, why I brought Dave into this story is that not just he's an example of the kind of values uh, that Mozilla stands for and believes in, not just that he teaches using an open source approach, source approach, but Dave is actually contributing concretely to building this movement and to building the software products that Mozilla will use to get people excited. And in fact, it's not just Dave, it's Dave's students. And here are four of Dave's students plus uh, one of my staff here at Mozilla at the meeting where they founded a software project called Popcorn and named a software project called Popcorn. And Popcorn is something that is very much about exposing people to the open building blocks of the web, exposing people to the creative potential of video, almost turning YouTube up to 11 by giving people the power of code and the open web on top of their videos. And this is a, a page in Popcorn that lets you make a, a, a pop-up video like you'd see on VH1, layering your own data and your own stories on top of an existing video. And here's an early prototype of Popcorn Maker, which shows that pop-up video idea in, in, uh, in action. You can see you know, you're putting your own information on top of the video, and you can see this uh, piece slides up, and it's just really like a simple iMovie type of editor. Um, so anybody who can edit a video on their Mac or anything else can also start to create these interactive web experiences. And why we're doing that, and what Dave's students are contributing to, and Dave is contributing to, is a way that people can make cool things on the web, software products that help people make cool things on the web, but also show them what the code of, that makes up the web can do, what they can do beyond just uploading something in a form. And so, you know, imagine if that popcorn, you know, if that popcorn making software was a little bit further along, which it will be by this summer, 10,000 coding kids using popcorn, 10,000 kids who are already using YouTube, making something cooler with each other and learning how the web works. That's the kind of thing that Dave's students are making possible. That's the kind of thing that we're actually building that will feed this bigger dream. And why I tell that story here is it's something that comes right from Seneca, something that students like you and professors like your professors are creating. And that's critical because this movement for a fourth literacy, this movement for all of us to tap into the skills and creativity of the web, to steward the web, is something that you can contribute concretely to. It's not something abstract and far away. And it's something that matters to you because your jobs will certainly be something where the web and coding matter. But more importantly, your grandchildren, our grandchildren, are going to live in an even more digital world where understanding how code works, how the digital world is constructed, will be essential. And so I I reach out to you and I wanted to come give this talk today because I think you can contribute and all of us need to contribute to building this movement that Dave has started, that Mozilla believes in, and that people around the world are starting to get going around a world that is web literate and a world where we all have control of our digital lives. Thank you very much.